policy committee for 15 February 2024. We begin with approval of the December 21st, 2023 minutes. So moved. All in favor? Uh, Discussion. Discussion, I'm sorry. I didn't have it yet. I didn't have it. Uh, policies for first reading. Dr. Burns? The first one is EBBA-7, it's the head lice policy. Uh, there were, this was the one if you were on the committee, you might remember um, that our school nurse department chair came to the committee and uh, spoke with you and heard some concerns about um, giving information to families if there is, like, if there are, if there's an outbreak of lice in the school. So there's an addition in that second full paragraph um, about information that will be included in the student handbook and on the school website and emailing. So, fairly minor, but just spelled out a little bit more clearly to address some concerns. And it looks like there's some cancellation and the return to school. Sorry. Yes, sorry about that. Um, at the bottom, um, because um, students are Students can come to school when they have lights. We can't keep them um, from school, so we took that piece out. We need discussion. These were required changes. Uh, there's an addition in definition, uh, the definition section about cybersecurity. Um, and then um, it's kind of minor, but it's all throughout the document. The information security officer um, takes the place of the title chief technology officer. So that was just changed throughout the document. The other change or the addition is um, students who are participating in uh, career exploration or technical education may with written parental consent and that's, um, that's bolded in two places in the document, um, can register for technology platforms. So I think that's around things like um, LinkedIn has recently um, become available to students in a, in a more secure fashion. But um, so I think that things like that where we're able to um, provide students with opportunities uh, that might, you know, that are related to um, online services like that, that we would be able to do that with parental consent. So the parents absolutely have an option to opt out of that yes. if yeah. they choose to. Yeah. And that was just an example. There might be some other more education specific platforms that they might want to use. Right. What offerings would we have um, should they choose to opt out of it? If other, if other students are involved in that portion of, of um, instruction and the parents choose to opt their, their student out of it, what would be offered to their student? I don't know. I would imagine this was really driven by um, the law. This wasn't driven by a school practice, yeah, so I'm not federal, really even... It's federal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't even know that this is... Um, I would have to look into that and see what the impact in the day-to-day -day for our students really is. And I can do that. Good discussion. The next three policies, I believe this committee asked to uh, just have for review, so they're included in the, um, in your, packet and I believe this was around um, some discrepancy around the language for the board chair yep. uh, creating committees or appointing or needing approval so so this was discussed um, when we were appointing so I think this board needs to look at the two but there's 
one other issue that I had, so I wanted to address. But on number on BBAB number four, it says the chair appoint members to serve on the com on specific committees subject to full board approval, which is what we did. On BDB, it says the chair shall preside. Oh no, shall appoint members of the school board to the standing and any special committees of the board, and it does not say subject to full board approval. So my recommendation would be to align the two, uh, that we add subject to full board approval on BDB, because I think the full board should be aware of the committee assignments. Question for you on that. Mm -hmm. So is there a reason to keep both? Do we need BDB if we're just going to have BDAB, or can we strike BDB? So my, my concern is BBAB talks about the role specifically of the chair. Yeah. BDB talks about all board officers. Yeah. So you could combine the two, but I think it's good to have them separated because I think it's nice to define that the chair has no authority or power without the full authority of the board, and I think that's really important when you're having that discussion. So. If you, I, I like it separate, but I mean, you could combine the two if you wanted to. No, after you bring that to light, I like the way um, I would agree keeping it separate and just aligning them on the committee assignments for can, full board approval. And can I bring up this second? I know Mr. Bellis has his hand raised. Um, the second thing was on this one, it says, in addition, here on? on BDB. It says, in addition, he or she shall name a chair for each committee, all of which serve at the pleasure of the school board. I think we should also add that he also nominates the vice chair, because I believe the chair has always done that. And I think what we have is he picks all the members of the committees, he picks the chair. I think it should be defined that he also picks the vice chair, because that's the only thing that it's not. And if it's not in there, then how, who would pick the vice chair? So whether it would be... He picks the chair and then that chair picks their vice chair, but in the past, I believe it's the chair has always done it. So I, I think we should have that discussion on how, if it's in there, and then, so that way it's clearly defined. Mr. Ellis? Yeah, and maybe I'm reading this wrong, but there looks, like BDB looks like there's a couple things that are off about it. It, it mentions that one of the board officers is the secretary, so is one of us supposed to be responsible for taking notes? I don't think that's how it's been done in practice, so maybe this this whole policy is not aligned with our practices, I think is kind of maybe what you're also saying, Ms. Stokes. The secretary, we've always, I mean, this we have a secretary. It's not a board officer, so you could define that the secretary is, is somebody from the SAE. He probably works in a small district with this, you know. It does yeah. say that offices are members. So you're correct. So, I mean, we could... You're right. I, yeah. So, so if I may respond to that. that so the superintendent, I believe, okay. as an ex officio non-voting member of the board, right. is your secretary. I see. Okay. Of the Wait, full board. Say that? Of the full board. Uh, what? Well, it says the superintendent is an ex officio non-voting member right. of the board. Right. And I believe. Right. But it doesn't say anything about being I a understand. I, 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 I know it doesn't say he's the secretary, it, but it has been past practice. He acts as a secretary in regards to minutes taking in that. In I didn't Who takes the, I don't think Kyle's ever taken the minutes. Oh, full Asian board? Yeah, I don't think he ever has. And he may appoint to. He has someone who does it in, yeah. Yeah, sure, on yeah. behalf of the other. He may appoint as. Yes. So maybe what we should say is this board shall appoint somebody, and then that way, if we appoint it to Kyle and Kyle, or we appoint it to the superintendent, like this board shall appoint somebody to be the secretary. Ought to be the note taker. Huh? I personally don't think the superintendent ought to be the note taker. He's not. He's not. He, he, or the secretary. Whatever I agree. You want he's not a board him. officer, so I agree with that. No, I think we can't change that substance because yeah, there's. The secretary is the one that takes the notes, whether it's Sherry or uh, Kim that's here. Yeah. I think we just put on there that the superintendent or assistant superintendent is a note taker, or they delegate. I think that would be best is they delegate. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So I just want to make sure I yelled at Shane. I got to make sure. I 
I, th I agree. I think the secretary, I think it says, I think it should say the board will delegate staff, or the board will delegate somebody That's to take point. notes on behalf of the committee levels. And I mean, right now it's not Kyle, and Kyle isn't a board officer. I mean, I get that. So, I mean, I don't yeah, know that we should I pay don't feel that it should be the, the superintendent no. or the assistant superintendent. I agree. That's and it's not, by the way. Sure. It's, so I think if we write the board, we'll delegate. Designate? Sure. Designate. Well, designate. Like designate a better designate. word than okay. yes. delegate? Yes. Designate? I can look into it. I, I think the because he is a the, because the superintendent is a position that's a non voting member of the board, I, I think the implication or the, what it implies is that I, I I think the superintendent's name is on all the minutes. Um, he may delegate somebody or she may delegate someone in the meeting to take the notes, but I can write it however you want or I can look into it he's, and see what the nature of he's not an elected this. official. He's not a board officer. I, He's not. I think when we put notes out at the bottom of them, it's whatever chair it is. So, right. so like at yeah. the end of the notes, like for yeah. uh, special, it's going to be in uh, Mrs. Right. Stowe. Yeah. Right. Respectfully submitted, Mrs. Sarah Harrington, the chair. So, yeah. and and again, he again, Mr. Camiri has brought up plenty of times. He he answers to the board. He is not a board officer. He's not an elected official. Didn't say he was elected. No, I, I know. Yeah. I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying. Right. I like the designated. But. No, really so would we need to make a motion? Do you want me to make the motion? Sure. So I'm going to make the motion to change BDD to reflect adding subject to full board approval with this, the chair. Did you understand? Do you want me to say it? Yeah. 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 I'm also going to say we add that the, the vice chair, um, he also chooses a vice chair for the committee. And then I'm going to add that we change the secretary to the board will designate. Did that make sense to everybody? Yeah. I would just need a second. Do a second? Sure. Paul's like, Any discussion? So, so, okay, I'm sorry. I do have a question. so, what do you, what do you, so you're talking about BDB, mm -hmm. and you want to, your motion is for what? To align with BDAB, so it's going to say, um, the chair shall appoint members of the school board to the standing in any special committees of the board, subject to full board approval, and then it's going to say, uh, in addition, he or she shall name a chair for each committee, a vice chair for each committee, all of which serve at the pleasure of the school board chair. Okay, so what happens to the rest of shall appoint members to the school board to the standing in any special committees within three days? So what are you doing with that language? Following each regular municipal election or within three days? At the first meeting in January yeah. is, is where we do it. We, so in January, we're going to get appointments? Well, we appoint the chair. The, the chair, the, the first right. meeting in January, first following in January. the chair, the responsibilities of the chair at the first meeting in January, following each regular municipal election, or within three days, shall, yeah, right? No we, we know shall, oh, right? Know we, shall. We, we've made it clear, we know shall yeah. appoint members of the school board to the standing and any special committees of the board. So if we change that three, three days, days. Yeah, you know, that, uh, I would just bring no, it up. No, you're, you're right. You're right. No, you're right. No. What would you suggest we should it be thirty days? No. Okay. What would no, because you're going to no, go a month without committing. Hold, hold on. Well, so the following Thursday, after that full board meeting, the following Thursday is always first. The first committees, which is th this committee right here. So I would say the following Monday, a special board meeting is scheduled so for the seven board of the committees. Well, I would say change days. it to seven, so you're covered. Yep. That's what I would say. The following Monday is just yeah, you go to schedule. Yeah, so seven days still gives you plenty of time to. Yeah. God forbid, there's no reason. Yeah. So I will add that to my motion. 
Are you fine with seconding that? Third. Okay. Yes. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. So pretty much the reason I brought this up is I know other board members have uh, brought up as well is it makes it very difficult for board members to go into schools the way this is written. You need to get full board approval. So let's say uh, it's, that you got to wait till a full board meeting to go to the school. Then you need to notify the superintendent that you're going into school. You got to notify the principal you're going into school. So I'm not on this committee, but I would recommend that you no longer need full board approval and you no longer need to notify the superintendent. You notify the principal what day you'd like to go in and visit the school and so be it. And if the superintendent wants to be notified, he can address it with the principals that they are to notify him. He reports to us. We don't report to him. So the last thing I know is my boss is going to let me know what's going on. No. That's my recommendation. So I agree, but I also have a couple other things that I kind of wanted to address. <laughs> Understand. <laughs> really? Sorry, go ahead. Whatever. Under staff communication to the board, it says, um, all communication or reports to the board or any board committee or from principals, supervisors, teachers, or other staff shall be submitted through the superintendent. I think if a teacher, we've, we've had staff email us already inviting us to do things in the school. Technically, they're breaking this. I think, I think we have some highly qualified staff in our district, and I think they know what they should and shouldn't go through the board, so I don't think we should restrict them if they want to send us something to let us know what's going on. I think they should, I think they should be able to. So I think... We change just shall to should, may. I don't, I don't think staff are contacting school board members and communicating to them without following the right chain of command. And I also feel that if a staff member did contact this board without following the proper chain of command, we're all adults to be able to say, please follow your chain of command. But I think this limits them to be able to, and maybe they just need a clarification of what their chain of command is. You know, I'm having an issue with special ed. You would want to go to whoever. We, we could send them in that direction, but I think we limit us by giving them that direction. So I would say we change that. Board communication to staff. It says that we may be communicated to employees through the superintendent or designee. Board members shall not initiate or listen to discussions of personal related matters, staff complaints, or grievances other than in accordance with the established board policies and regulations. Again, I don't think if if we're having a staff that's having an issue, I don't I think again we're smart enough to know that if it's personal related staff complaints or grievances. We know that I tell them they have to follow that chain of command, but I also think that we're limiting ourselves, and I'm not sure why. So I don't think we should, I said, you know, I think it should be step board members. We're not going to initiate it, but I also don't think, I don't know, that's a concern for me. Mr. Wilson. Dr. Wright, I hate to put you in like an awkward situation by asking you this question, but do you care to play like devil's advocate about why these policies exist in the form that they do? Because I, I know we're not the only district. I, I totally get it. I want to be able to talk to my constituents and hear from staff. And, but they must have ex they they came to light for some reason. And do you I I believe it's based on the RSAs that talk about the role of the board versus the role of the superintendent and um, making it really clear where those lines are. So, um, for example, um, 
as board members, you, you're board members as a whole, but you're individuals as soon as a meeting breaks. And so um, when, you're, when you're asking a principal to um, invite you into the building, uh, there, I, I could imagine as a principal, you might feel compelled to always honor that request because you are a board member where they might they have a job to do and responsibilities. I, th I think the role of the superintendent is to help coordinate that in a way that makes sense for the daily operations of the building. But the superintendent oversees all the staff. That's their job. That's their responsibility to make sure that all personnel are um, fulfilling their roles and that education is happening in the buildings. Um, and also to support the board and so that, to help. I, I think I'm going all over the place, but I do, I do have a lot of thoughts about it. Um, so uh, that would be a devil's advocate moment, perhaps, um, for in terms of school visits. Um, staff, same thing with staff communication. You're the hearing board, so if there's a personnel issue, um, and if you are, if we're not following that chain of command, that puts the board at a really tough, in a really tough spot to not be able to be that hearing board anymore. Again, it's just the roles and responsibilities that are set forth by. Um, the state in terms of what, what's the job of the board and what's the job of the superintendent. Um, I think policies help, so I hear um, the idea of changing the word shall. I think it's really helpful for staff to know this is, this is the expect, expectation and this is how, how things run um, so that there's some clarity there and so it's not vague. Those are some immediate thoughts. I think I'm prepared for more. So, so just for clarity, there is no law because if there was a law, it would be stated on here for our policy. So if you're referring to a law, I'd like to know what the law is that you're referring to so that we could look it up. Yeah, I have copies right here. Okay. Um, I also had a conversation with, while well, she's passing that out, I had a conversation with Jerry Grossman and asked about um, the termination part of it, so like when it's personnel related. Jerry is going to come in March to speak to the board because again, I asked Jerry what the law was and he said it's basically we fall under the school board policies, which is not what the law states. So Jerry's going to come and give us a whole breakdown of what we can and can't do. Um, right, and next, remember next Thursday, um, Will Phillips from NHSBA is coming to talk about, there's a, a certain set of policies.